Hey, Steve. Let's see what was first on the list here. Um, okay, so just learning from, from some really good feedback last week. Uh, is there any quick hits, action items that we want to uh, pull in? Like I've seen John, I, I know the listing stuff will be a longer conversation, but uh, John, is e-tags a quick hit? Actionable item? Uh, it's, a, it's a thought I've had. I don't know that it's actionable. I would like feedback from other people. Okay, so why don't we do that in the second part um, then? Okay. Sounds good. Um, since we try to go with what's on the agenda, we'll go there. Uh, so just a quick intro to, to Peter. Uh, several, a couple months ago now, before the new year, they, uh, th we had some customer call that was like, hey, we're having some problems in this region. We're seeing different performance. And there was something about the question that we saw through the support channel that just it piqued my interest. So we reached out to them. Um, they're doing some great registry benchmark capabilities. So we thought it was a great opportunity to bring them in here, talk to all of us and tell us about the great work they're doing and help them a little bit with what's special about registries compared to other things. But after that is just tell us, uh, give us some benchmarks that we can strive to achieve. So with that, I, yeah, there he is. It's all yours. Hi guys, um, I will stop my video so my connection doesn't break. Um, and I will just get into the presentation. Um, okay. So yeah, just ping me if I start breaking or something. So can you see my screen? Yeah. Looks good. Okay. So hi guys, uh, I'm Petar uh, Galic. Um, I am here to present my uh, master thesis work. I uh, created, I designed and implemented uh, a benchmark for uh, container registers. Firstly, a bit about us. Um, I uh, graduated from a Master of Computer Science from uh, Frey University and the University of Amsterdam. Um, uh, topic, my focus throughout my master um, uh, degree was uh, distributed in cloud systems and um, be, uh, performance evaluation. Uh, my first uh, supervisor, uh, Dr. Alexander Yosup, uh, is an established professor at uh, PU Amsterdam. And also um, he's the research lead for the at-large research group, which is a university research group uh, composed of uh, students from uh, TU Delft and uh, Frey University Amsterdam. Uh, together with my daily supervisor, Irvin Van Eyck, um, they are leading the research efforts of the uh, spec research group cloud and the vision of, of both of these uh, research group is to engineer strong ecosystems through innovation which is facilitated by knowledge sharing and um, collaboration. Um, the spec research group is uh, uh, focused on benchmarking of systems and therefore the spec research group cloud is primarily focused on providing benchmarks for um, critical cloud services. Uh, and container registry is definitely one of the cloud services that is part of this critical production and the deployment processes. We observed two use cases in which uh, container registries are um, important and their performance can be a bottleneck. Firstly, in case of large uh, Kubernetes cluster updates where there might be uh, uh, thousands of uh, concurrent uh, image pull requests, uh, the, the throughput uh, really becomes a bottleneck here. And uh, we've already seen from companies like Uber and Alibaba that they are already uh, developed, that they already developed solutions that uh, move this bottleneck uh, to and uh, solve this by peer-to-peer -peer, um, sharing of data. 
A second uh, use case, which is especially interested for us, uh, uh, is based on our analysis of open source serverless platforms, where uh, pulling from a container registry contributes to a, a serverless function uh, called start. Uh, so we can see that uh, performance of uh, container registries is important and needs to be quantified. However, we haven't identified any uh, real world open source benchmarking tools for uh, registries. There are some, but they are mostly directed towards uh, academia. So they lack some features such as authentication to be able to evaluate uh, real world registries. And subsequently there, we haven't observed any uh, large benchmark work in scientific literature regarding uh, production grade uh, registries. So with our work, we aim to bridge this gap. Uh, to do this, we, in, in the uh, scientific conduct, we um, uh, first posed some research questions that we wanted to answer. And the first research question is concerned with uh, finding the key aspects of every benchmark. We wanted to de the, de uh, find, uh, identify workloads that are uh, uh, preferably uh, tied to some uh, real uh, uh, world usage. We wanted to find uh, metrics that are specifically relevant when uh, reporting uh, container registry performance. And we wanted to identify a set of uh, registries that are widely recognized by the community and uh, relevant to users. With the second uh, research question, we aimed to solve this uh, by creating a design and implementation of this benchmarking tool that will uh, support these previously mentioned uh, workload met metrics and registries. And finally, in the third research question, we are concerned with using this tool to perform uh, and report uh, the performance evaluation based on the experiments we designed. So first step in the process is uh, we launched uh, an extensive survey of uh, what, what is the state of the art in both uh, scientific literature and uh, industry. So uh, regarding the scientific literature, we identified four uh, papers that are uh, primarily focused on reducing image pull times. First one, the, uh, the earliest one is the slacker, which in uh, which is a work which presents um, uh, Slack, so Slacker is a Docker storage driver which fetches um, image layers lazily so that um, uh, only layers pulled uh, that that it pulls layers based on what a, a container needs to run immediately. Um, However, this uh, approach is not the most optimal because uh, client and the registry need to uh, maintain a persistent, persistent um, uh, connection. Uh, the second paper, which is very important also for our work is a collaboration between IBM and Virginia Tech. Uh, and it is a concern. And in this work, they presented a set of anonymized IBM uh, production registry traces, and they also presented a tool with which uh, these traces can be replayed and uh, some metrics are reported. Uh, the next two um, works are also from the collaboration between IBM and uh, Virginia Tech. Uh, Bolt is, uh, is a distributed uh, registry design where each, in, where, where each node has its own local storage. So the extra hop between uh, registry nodes and the underlying storage service is eliminated. Uh, finally, the most recent paper from 2020 is uh, Dupe Hunter, which improves the design of both by in introducing some smart uh, replication and deduplication based on the analysis of the IBM production traces. Uh, these uh, two last papers are also evaluated using the trace replayer tool. Then we moved on to the industry. We grouped um, registries in three uh, groups where, um, however, there can be many other groups 
as well. Um, the first the category are the public registries where a main feature um, uh, or yeah, yeah, the main feature are the public repositories where any registered users can um, can uh, pull these images and these uh, registries are uh, very affordable. They also contain uh, private repositories. Uh, it is affordable and it is directed towards uh, single users, small and medium enterprises. Second uh, category are the cloud registries, which um, uh, which are the services offered nat nat natively by the underlying cloud platforms. They are well uh, integrated with other services offered by these cloud platforms and users uh, can use them together with other cloud services and also, but, but they can also be used uh, uh, with an external deployment where the registry is the only point of contact with the cloud platform. And finally, the third uh, category are the self-hosted registries. These registries, a lot of them are open source and they offer some niche capabilities. As we mentioned before with the uh, Kraken and Dragonfly, they offer some peer-to-peer -peer sharing among images and uh, in case of Portus, some extended um, security uh, features. Finally, to summarize our key findings, um, we identified a set of seven registries that are interested, that we recognized as uh, interesting uh, and uh, uh, registries that our benchmarking tool should be able to measure, uh, evaluate. Uh, secondly, we identified three metrics that are uh, relevant when talking about uh, registry uh, performance, and those are throughput, latency, and cost. And finally, we identified the workload, uh, which, which is the set of IBM container registry traces. Uh, and this will allow us to perform experiments using uh, real world, uh, uh, real world, world usage. Now that we know a bit about back background, let's go over to the design and implementation of this tool. Firstly, uh, let's quickly, I, I want to quickly showcase what do we actually want to um, measure. So this is a very simplified view of the whole, um, uh, of all the components that uh, participate in the image delivery process. Um, here uh, you can see that our component of interest is the registry and uh, the other components are functional, which means we are not concerned with the performance of the container runtime and um, other uh, steps of image delivery process such as um, decompression. We are purely interested in how registries uh, are handling how quickly and uh, how big of a load can these uh, registries uh, handle. So these, uh, so these HTTP requests. Uh, on the right, we can see the design of um, uh, our tool. There are two core components here, and these are the harness, which uh, gets input from the CLI by user and instructs other subcomponents to uh, perform the experiments and the integrated uh, trace replayer tool, which allows us to uh, run uh, real world experiments. Regarding the implement implementation, the tool is written in Golang. Uh, we are using a Docker registry client by Heroku, which allows us a more fine grained um, uh, interaction, control over the interactions with the registry. Um, and also allows us to construct our own manifest, which is in, uh, especially important for the synthetic uh, Im generate, synthetically generated images. Um, we also support a fine-grained uh, configuration using YAML files, for example, number of clients, uh, image size, and so on. Uh, regarding the trace replayer tool, it, uh, it, is, uh, it has a master and client, uh, client's architecture. We extended this tool uh, with uh, uh, cap capabilities uh, of uh, actually evaluating the production grade registries. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, but it's still a tool provi uh, from col uh, collaboration with uh, IBM and uh, Virginia. 
now that we know a bit about tool, let's go over uh, to experiments. Um, firstly, a bit about our infrastructure. Um, so in our experiments, we are modeling this uh, external deployment where the, ex where the so the deployment is outside of the cloud platform and the only uh, interaction between cloud platform and the uh, deployment is the container registry. Uh, we deployed our experiments on the, uh, our university supercomputer. It's a, it's a medium-sized supercomputer uh, cons, uh, cons, uh, composed of six uh, clusters with uh, 200 compute nodes. It has a, a one gigabit per second connectivity to uh, Amsterdam Internet Exchange, which sits on top of the transatlantic cable. Regarding our experiments, we designed uh, three experiments. Uh, first two are uh, real, uh, are using a real workload, so the IBM production uh, registry traces. And the third one uses a synthetically generated image and uh, it's, it's uh, uh, over a long period of time. So let's quickly just uh, look at the uh, the, the characteristics of the container registry workload. Uh, you, you can see, as you already know, that the container registry workload has some, uh, has a very large variability in file sizes between different uh, file types. And we can also see that um, a ratio of get to put requests is heavily skewed towards get requests. So these are some important characteristics of the uh, container registry workloads. For the first experiment, we, uh, as I said, uh, we are using a real workload. Uh, we are uh, de we deployed three clients on our su uh, supercomputer, each on its own node, with 100 threads each. Uh, the egress size is relatively small, which allowed us to uh, test a large uh, registry set, and we also uh, we used uh, both uh, delay and stress uh, trace replayer modes. What are delay and stress replayer modes? Well, uh, the delay mode is simulating the real uh, delays between the requests in the sample, while in the stress mode, um, we in in the stress mode we are just firing requests as soon as there is a thread available to serve this request. So as you can see in the stress mode, there is the amount of the maximum concurrent amount amount of concurrent request is 300 and some of the registries as uh, Steve said uh, one of the ACI registries for example it wasn't able to uh, handle this uh, concurrent load um, here on the right side you can see the and to be fair hold on I was trying to let this one go but <laughs> <laughs> one of the and I just paste this because I was trying to do it uh, multitasking here one of the things we were talking about was testing private registries for the cloud providers. Is it really fair to test them outside of the cloud? Because we're all right, focused on our, our cloud regions per se. And even though we obviously want to support developers at home, it's, it's just not a fair comparison. One region might be closer than the, to their supercomputer than the other for whatever reason. Um, you know, testing some of the public registries, you know, whether it be Hub or even ECR Public now, or, or you know, uh, uh, GitHub, whatever. That that you know, they're intended for that. But we were specifically talking like it, to do to app, apples to apples testing. You should be testing within the clouds. Yeah, uh, we we will get to that. <laughs> I, okay, I, fair uh, I promise. Um, so yeah, here we can see this is a throughput per second in the stress experiment. Uh, we can see that some uh, registries observe a higher throughput uh, spikes later, which might uh, have to do, for example, in the uh, for uh, an example of ACR basic, um, might have to do something with the throughput guarantees that different Azure uh, usage tiers uh, promise. Uh, these are the get uh, layer latency and get manifest latency. Here you can see all the registries that we tested. And um, we can see that, of course, there is a larger performance variability for the uh, layer gets because of uh, the much larger variability in file sizes, but we also observed some uh, differences in uh, variability between um, uh, for the get manifest latency, for example. 
In the second experiment, we again deployed it with three clients, 100 trades each, but this time we selected a very large workload. Um, the, so the, the experiment lasted for one hour uh, and we only used the delay mode because in this case, every uh, registry started um, timing out. Um, we used the four registries and these are the uh, push latencies for all blob types. And uh, we, can, we can also see some uh, interesting uh, differences in uh, performance uh, var variability among these uh, large cloud providers. For the third experiment, it is the long running experiment. We deployed it on, uh, in Amsterdam on the digital ocean droplet. We used a synthetically generated uh, image with of 10, 10 la layers where each layer has one uh, megabyte. Um, and we, we ran this experiment every six hours. We pushed the image and then we pulled it for two months. And we used 16 registries. And I think this uh, plot will again, not make Steve happy. Um, we, uh, we observed some interesting uh, results where after a certain amount of time, we saw a bit of uh, performance uh, variability in case of uh, Azure Europe West registries. So yeah. And now that we uh, showcased uh, a bit about our experiments, um, uh, let's go over to uh, next steps, both for us and possible ideas for collaboration with you. Uh, for us, uh, the next steps are, uh, as, uh, as Steve already noted, we got already some uh, very constructive feedback. Um, we, we understand that the cloud registries are uh, optimized for uh, in, inside uh, cloud platform, inside cloud region uh, image deliveries. So in order to, we wanted to expand the scope to provide more relevance to uh, evaluate these, uh, these performances inside cloud. So we deploy our experiment inside uh, our cloud region. Um, we also want to experiment a bit with the workloads, uh, possibly generate our own workloads uh, using the uh, IBM traces as a template. And also after we fix these issues and many more small improvements, we want to turn this work into a publication for a top tier venue. Um, now comes the interesting part. Um, we think that the OCI, uh, the vision of OCI is very much aligned with um, the vision of at large and the spec research group. Uh, we both want to um, build a stronger cloud uh, ecosystems through um, sharing of knowledge and standardization. Uh, and that's why we think uh, collaboration, uh, we think we could collaborate to um, enhance uh, this process. Um, on uh, Some of our ideas would be to evaluate other steps of the Im image delivery process. So for example, decompression and uh, evaluate different compression types. We are very much interested in your work with ORAS and we would uh, we are uh, interested in evaluating the delivery of other artifacts, also to further enable uh, sharing of knowledge. We would uh, very much like if uh, we could discuss uh, more uh, uh, workloads, uh, which could uh, help uh, learn more about uh, uh, how users are using these services. And if you uh, are interested in, in this work and see some future, it would be, it would be ver very nice to hear your feedback and uh, your ideas. And uh, if not here, then you can always um, contact me on my email and uh, contact us through our website and to see if there are some opportunities. Thank you. It, it was great to talk to them. I thought it was a great opportunity, especially in all the conformance work that had been going on uh, prior to this. So um, 
it, you know, we, there's lots of different benchmarks in the industry for various technologies and things. Uh, I, I really truly didn't view this as a competitive thing, although I'm sure it will become one. It's more a matter of, you know, uh, it, it, we had a little side conversation on, you know, throttling. Like we're all struggling with this and we know that customers can uh, abuse registries um, and just pinging us to death. You have anything new, you have anything new, you have anything new as opposed to probably smarter ways to do it. Um, so I think it's being able to help, you know, with the, this group with one of the right um, scenarios that we're actually targeting with registries. And, uh, you know, so we can do the benchmarks around that. And uh, especially as we continue to support additional things in registries um, to be able to make sure all this additional indexing work we're going to wind up having to do, um, you know, has good baselines. It'd be great for us instead of having to write our own tests on this, like to be able to leverage this test framework to see, you know, for our own registry testing to make sure we're, we're good with it before we deploy it. So I thought it was a pretty cool project. Um, as with most universities, they're always looking for funding. So um, mm -hmm. we certainly don't want this to be, and, and we wouldn't, you know, we couldn't, you know, be biased by any means towards Azure or Microsoft. So uh, I'll give a plug for uh, them here. And I can't remember, we were talking about this before the holidays went on. So I'm sure you'll be providing us information on how we could help, but um, it was a pretty cool area to focus on. I, yeah. did, I, did you get on Slack yet with this group? I know you're on some of the emails, but um, I would encourage your team to get on the Slack channel with us and ask the questions you need and engage with the questions and feedback and we're happy to all help. Yeah, um, I, 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 I haven't. This, this is my first point of interaction with, um, with OCI. Well, cool. So yeah, if uh, there is no further questions, I'm really uh, th thank you for your time. I hope that um, we can find some way of um, collaborating together. Um, yeah, um, thank you for your time and thanks for uh, also um, yeah listening to us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some good information. I, I would like to to make a sort of a side request here. Um, when you're hitting yeah. the public registries, um, they, 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 you, you will get bandwidth limited, right? Or it will cause yeah. some issues. 80 gigabytes is a lot to download. Um, it's very likely to you know, trigger your IP. Um, yeah. so you might want to keep it down to into the megabytes or at least one gigabyte size. Well, we wanted to. You, you do, you do 10, 10 of those and you're, you're looking at, you know, you're, get, you're starting to go approach terabytes, right? across the different. Yeah, one could argue the latency is actually good for throttling. Like, hey, we're doing the right thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it, I think that's the feedback he was kind of looking for. I was like, what exactly, you know, should they be testing and how should they be testing? And, you know, uh, unfortunately we do have ML images. I'm sure you guys all see them as well. For some reason, the M, well, the ML images tend to be pretty large. Um, so uh, we definitely want to test them. Oh things. yeah. <laughs> Wait, which version of Windows? Oh, I need two. Hey, oh, hey, no. hey, <laughs> hey. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I put that in my CICD, and all of a sudden, you know, it's a mess. Yeah. Or we put it in our CICD. Um, quick question. Uh, are the slides you just presented, uh, a lot of times we put those in the HackMD. You know, some people may come along behind and read the, the notes. Is there a shareable PDF or something we can... Put somewhere sure i will i will link it in the in the hack md perfect thank you cool no worries um i just want to quickly suggest uh so really cool um i want to quickly suggest that we maybe make this part of distribution spec go libraries um so there's a uh peter i'll i'll send you an email with what i'm thinking but there's a conformance directory if you go into the distribution spec repo and it kind of has like a pattern for how to plug in details about a registry and then run conformance it'd be interesting okay. if we had it'd be interesting if we could put the same type of details uh like environment variables basically as inputs to run your tool and then contribute it into the spec itself um, okay I, I yeah. you know, i'm going to send you an email 
specifically. Sure, what thanks. Cool. I might be a little careful with that. Um, there are some litigious vendors in the world uh, who do not like being benchmarked. I'm not, no, I'm not suggesting a wall of shame right, like, right. The, like the slide, but just the ability to pull it off the shelf and run it. Um, I'm in no way suggesting we run this as part of GitHub Actions. Sure. Cool. A stress performance tool. All right, um, John, you're up. I don't, I don't know if I can even present because I'm on like a Chrome OS device and Google hates Zoom, but um, I, there's, a, there's a PR I've linked to. So two things I'd like to discuss and just like get some feedback from other registry operators or clients or anyone interested. And I know, uh, Josh, I owe you a bunch of PRs and reviews, but um, so one thing that I've been uh, kind of hoping to push through for years now is a replacement for catalog and also a way to list manifests. Uh, there's no way to do this and we removed or deprecated catalog. And so uh, I have proposed two very simple APIs, one for listing manifests and one for listing repositories. I think they're good. I like them. I would implement them and I would like to know what other people think. Uh, the PR has kind of devolved into like bike shedding about agile versus waterfall, but the, 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 my proposal is still there and I would like someone to look at it. Yeah, fair. It was only removed from R1. You know, right. We had an intention to do to work on indexing for the next release. Yeah, so I'd... thoughts. Um, I've, I've been thinking about this for a while and I'm curious if, if this does not meet anyone else's requirements. Uh, but yeah. Do you have uh, any, any, any prototypes? For example, uh, I have not one? prototyped this. I, I could build you one in about an hour, but it, <laughs> oh. it, it, it maps directly onto existing concepts um, and structs. Yeah. And so I think it's pretty, I think you can look at it and kind of see where I'm going. But uh, the other thing I'd be interested in talking about um, is this e-tags thing. I know that a lot of registries do set e-tags and it's part of the HTTP RFCs. And so perhaps everyone implements this and I don't because I didn't think about it, but um, something that has come up before is that it is hard to client side coordination and it is very possible to have race conditions around tagging things. Um, for example, if you were to construct a multi-platform image and push it to a registry, you have to coordinate that client side uh, and you cannot coordinate that like on a tag because if you fan out and then push to the same tag and fan in or like, even look or try to append to a tag, uh, it's very possible that you're racing with yourself. Um, These are like the multi-arc push after, before the individual, individual architecture tags are uploaded. Right, right. And so to do this, you need to do client-side coordination where you fan out and then fan in and then push it. Um, I, I think Tianon and I talked about this at DockerCon or KubeCon or something years ago, but one way that I thought of to address this is to implement the e-tag uh, part of the RSC, which I've linked to. Basically, uh, you can set a uh, if match thing or an if none match thing and say, hey, uh, don't, don't let me put this unless nothing is already there. And then the registry will know, oh, okay. I can transactionally check to make sure that nothing else is written to this. Uh, similarly, you can send the e-tag the registry gave you and say, don't, don't put this unless nothing has changed since then. Uh, so this, this allows you to transactionally update a tag uh, so that you can build it in the registry instead of having to do that client side coordination, which simplifies your build process a lot if you're doing this kind of thing. Um, I don't know if anyone has already implemented this or wants or thinks of other use cases for this, but I wanted to throw that out there see if anyone thought that was a terrible idea and then maybe I'll PR it after I've uh, given Josh what I owe him. I mean, there was a bunch of stuff that we talked about with the multi-arc manifest stuff that's been a, a hassle for a lot of people. And this was one of the things that came up and it was October or November when Tianan and a bunch of folks jumped on. I forgot who the other person was who uh, was actually gonna try to facilitate some additional conversations on just the multi-arc space as a whole, because there's there's a lot of, and that this particular problem of, you got three different architectures that are building, when do they get done and when when can you actually pull the, uh, push the architecture manifest? So it's definitely a, 
a problem that I think we all see will get bigger as we have more IoT devices. And uh, now the IBM folks will have um, Z, ZOS, right? The, the new, new platforms as well. So it'd be great to get some more focus on it. And it's unfortunate that we've already like built all of the infrastructure to work around this. Um, but, you know, maybe we can simplify or speed up some. some yeah, none of it's good. That's right. the problem. Yeah. We, we built all this infrastructure, but it's all just bubble gum, band-aid, bailing wire, duct tape. It's all working around the problem over and over and over and over and over again. So I would certainly love some way to atomic update a manifest list. That would be a huge win in general. And I don't think distribution spec has any way to effectively accomplish that today. It, so th this is where it's weird, right? Because distribution spec inherits HTTP and per HTTP, you should be able to do this as a client, but we don't call it out as a requirement. And so it's very unlikely that everyone has implemented this. Um, and I, I'm happy to PR an example of how this would work, if that would be helpful. But um, yeah, I, I would like this as well. I'd be um, so interested in this too. Um, one of the issues that I've been struggling with is if you have a collection of artifacts that are related to each other, then how does a client resolve this? Um, because a client needs to know, okay, this this is how you parse this string versus, um, you know, download the config, look at the config, see what kind of manifests are there, look for your specific manifest, go up and get that manifest. What does this manifest, does this manifest contain a link to another artifact that I need, that I have a dependency on, uh, and so on and so forth. It would be really awesome to do the resolving on the server side. Uh, that, that is similar, but unrelated to what I'm proposing. I, I, one thing that is frustrating is that we have no way, we don't even specify really how you do this resolution, uh, even for multi-platform images, it's, it's not explicitly clear. Um, server side resolution is interesting. I, I, I'd think about that, that sounds fun. Uh, be a little bit of an optimization. But, but my, my suggestion does not solve that in any way, unfortunately. I, I, I'm going to use that though to, to loop back around because you know John and I have been kind of going back and forth on this one. And, and the reality is I really want to get the listing API in as well. Um, the, the kind of the example we've been talking about, um, if I bubble all the way up, it's like we know we want to build the house, but we also know that we need the deck and the garage or whatever. We may not be putting those other two pieces in place, but we have to design it in a way that we know we can do the additions later on. So the, the debate we've been having is not that we want a listing API, of course we do. How do we do it in such a way that as we continue to add the enhancements that we know we wanna do, even if we don't do them now, can be added so they don't, that we don't just wind up with this fractured experience. So the, the thing that we've been kind of going back and forth on is Let's just capture what it is we're trying to achieve. And then if we can, you know, because we, we know what we know, we don't know what we don't know. And if we can just capture that list, then we can say, all right, now we have the list of things that we need. Here's the only ones that we really have to solve now. Yeah, that design looks great. Let's go do off and do it. Um, or here's a minor tweak to it that nobody really cares about, but look at all the things that lights up. So that was the, the piece that I was just trying to bubble back up on is like, hey, can we get especially as we have the diversity here of the registry operators that you know, have implemented various pieces of this. We have CICD providers, which was the interesting one that came up in the distribution call the other day, where, and, and we see this ourselves in our own Azure tools. Like, it, within the portal, how do you list the content of a registry so that the user can pick, I want to deploy this image. Um, so that was the, um, the bigger conversation that we're just trying to figure out, how can we get this common thing that will work and across the, the off boundaries as well as the one of the things that comes up um, and still have actually cloud or uh, registry specific extensibility. Because I think we'd all like to deprecate our listing APIs uh, maybe get some better search APIs because ultimately the thing that I see here is if we can find some better of these search APIs, then just like ORAS as a way to push things across all registries, we could actually have some better tools that can browse 
and display content across multiple registries. Um, so it's not just the CI CD providers that we could say they're making money. Let's go let them go and you know, implement each cloud provider's APIs. But we can implement a much better ecosystem and maybe even a, a client reg uh, registry CLI that works across all registries. So I. Well, John and I kind of, it seems like we're going back it, uh, on this list quite a bit. I actually am very, very supportive of trying to get this done. I just want to make sure we don't wind up reserving it again and starting over because we didn't get all the requirements down. Yeah, I'm happy to PR what I have. And if anyone disagrees or it doesn't satisfy some requirements, block me. But uh, I don't know how long it is reasonable to wait for someone to come and give me more requirements if I don't have them. I, I did start, I encourage people to start piling on there and what we need, and maybe it isn't a ton. Um, I know we know a bunch of what we need with uh, the notary work, which which we as a business need to get done, you know, in the next couple of months. So uh, I think we've got enough pressing information. We should be able to surface it out, but I just, I didn't want it to come just from notary. That's why I was asking others, the other cloud providers and other registry operators to chime in on what they need. Yeah. I, I'm interested uh, in what, sorry. No, uh, what I was going to say, would it be helpful if we sort of came up with a standard like um, PR, not PR, but like proposal format? Because I feel like um, these things can be pieced in and better understood than just these long PRs with huge discussions between you and Steve. And if we had something that was in a more you know, you're saying you could build it in an hour. Can we give you the, you know, the layout that would enable you to share that information more clearly than going back and forth? Yeah, if, if there's a formal process that already existed that I, I'm just completely ignoring, I apologize. Uh, no, there, there isn't. I'm, I'm just, I think stuff is going to come up like this and it might be helpful just to have like a layout. Yeah. Uh, I'm happy to make up whatever I think is reasonable, uh, but I doubt that is what everyone would like. So if if someone is interested and in, we could steal caps if you want, I don't know. I think the question is more like the bigger picture, what is it like this goes back to some of the charter of uh, the distribution spec and, and I, like, I didn't mean to walk into the push pull conversation. It was more of like, where does this feature fit in so that there's Lego blocks here that I, I can add this API and the next API could come in easily and they all feel very synergetic um, without having to do, I don't want to pick on the Docker stuff, but it's like, you know, the, the early stuff was Docker. There was always a new refactoring that was going on. And it was a quickly evolving space. So it makes fair, but how can we all have very huge registries that we're managing and huge customer bases, any churn in that makes it very difficult. So the more we can be comfortable that this API that we're adding fits into the things we're going to add six months, nine months out, um, the more stability we'll have and the more comfort that we'll have in adding these things. So that, that's really kind of the context by which um, I was referring to. I like the idea of requiring demos because it means you've actually gone and implemented it and seen how awful or good it is. Yeah, I wonder if I, there was like a whole discussion about plugin, a plugin system or an extension system a while ago. And I'm wondering if there's something we can do there where, I don't know, we don't have like a reference implementation though, right? Like I think, I think uh, we, we have the Docker distribution where it's not distribution distribution. Yeah, I, think I, yeah, but API. I would, yeah, I would almost, I would almost rather use like, um, the Zot project just because it's more to the spec. Right. Shoot, shoot your shoot. Yeah, because the Docker distribution was not developed as a reference implementation. It was developed right. as the actual underlying product that the spec was then derived from, whereas Zot was derived from the spec instead. Gotcha. And it's not like a it's not like a thing to say, hey everyone go use Zot. Um, there's obviously distribution has all this performance and uh, years of optimization, but it's like this was a spec built thing. And if you can add a plot, if you can add a, I don't know, I don't want to go too far. I just, I just think like, you know, if, if John says he can build it in an hour, which 
could just be what he's saying, but I believe him. If we just had some code base that we could throw together these proposals said, in a more concrete way. <laughs> I think he said one, but I, heard, I, heard I, heard challenge, but I like three. That's easier. I mean, probably, I don't know. <laughs> Can I pick which hour? I, I can't do it today. <laughs> We we used to say three months, ne never three hours. That's that's a that's, that's, that's I, think, I think as long as the messaging around like what the reference implementation is intended for is clear, then go for it. Like there's a whole bunch of reference implementation of crypto libraries that no one is ever going to actually use that version. The point of the version is so that you can read through the code and understand the process. Obviously, there's like no hardware optimizations being done. It's just like written and well-documented so you can understand what it's supposed to look like. If I had to pick something that existed today that looked like that, I would say it's Zot. Um, and as long as the messaging is really clear that like, hey, you're building a registry, do you wanna see like an example of that? If like that's the messaging, it's super clear, then sure, I'm actually completely down with this proposal. But to try to, if you hear somebody on Twitter being like, oh, we're just running the OCI distribution spec, like reference implementation. It's like, no, I should never hear that. I don't want to ever yeah. see that. <laughs> I, I think one thing that's challenging about a reference implementation of any of this is that it, the, the spec is incomplete. You cannot run a useful thing because auth is out of scope. The, it, it's, it's impossible to write a client or registry that is usable right now per the specs. Um, like, I, I mean, I've with help implemented a very bad registry that just sits in memory for testing. Uh, I will use that to demo this, but I don't want anyone to use it ever. And I don't want it to become a reference implementation. Um, and, and, and that's why the scope was set where it is, right? Everybody expects that auth will be the next thing we'll have some agreement on, right? Yeah. Or, or we'd like to skip there <laughs> at some point. Well, but auth is one of those challenges, right? Like I, there is like the, the Huge big auth flow is, is usable. And I think that's in some of them, at least, like that's how we did auras was to make sure that the basic auth flow worked. But it, you know, on the scope of usability, this is the debate we've been having around the push semantics. Like, if, if we, what is the definition of a of distribution in a registry? Like, there there has to be some set of usable functionality that we say this is what it means to support it. Right. Yeah, I wish there was a separate spec that is everything, uh, or we named it differently. But I don't know. I like that it is. Why do we need down. a different one? Uh, so that you can say, I implement the pool path and none of the other stuff that is optional. Yeah, and that's where Vince was going with these extension points. That's not, that, that did sound like a, you know, an interesting way to, to bring in new features and test them out and see if people like it. And then whichever ones get used by the most people, those will be promoted, right? Yeah. It, that's the conformance test, right? The conformance test has that bucket, right? It's got the four categories and you don't have to be on all four. Um, I think the question is, what is what does it mean to actually do the basics? But I love the extensibility, like you know, whether hopefully it's not the listing API, but whatever the right set of functionality that might be in a registry that might that not everybody might implement. Those I'd love to see those as extensions. I've worked in like the BitTorrent community, and they have very similar structures where there's like BEPs, which are like the BitTorrent enhancement proposals, and then they have extensions that get defined in those and kind of like the sad reality of what that has become is that there are like, there's basically libtorrent and there's two forks of libtorrent and they implement all of the extensions and that's it. And it's a monoculture and there aren't any other implementations because nobody wants to implement all the extensions and there's no good understanding in the community of what extensions are popular and what ones aren't. So you feel like you don't really know the client compatibility story. And when you don't have answers to these kinds of questions, um, yeah, you, you get all kinds of problems cropping up when you go with the extension model. Uh, and I, I just want us to avoid that if we, we end up pursuing this. I don't, I don't know if that means we run more services similar to the conformance tests where like we pull the actual community or like get the registries to share numbers, right? But like we need, I think we should be making data-driven decisions in general with this back. And I don't know how we get that level of transparency. Well, I think now's now's a good time to you know to pick the next focal point, 
And I think index is probably one that we could we could tackle, right? Um, probably easier to do index than auth as as the as the next as the next big feature to add. And I, I think we can we can probably only do one big thing at a time. We're just now finishing up with the dot zero spec. I think it's probably a good time to pick the next thing, right? It sounds like John wants it to be index, and I'm not disagreeing. And I don't think anybody else is. So uh, we we could probably Steve put up a vote on an email and see if, you know who all wants you know to, to try to make that the next big thing, and we could start discussing it and move move it a little faster. I, I think that's the piece I was just trying to figure out. Is like I don't want this to be some bike shedding moment or some filibustering. Is just simply what is it that we're agreeing on? Because the the observation I've had on some of these as we get into these big debates on who's got the better design, and, but we're not really, all the designs are perfectly valid. It's just each of us have different ideas in our head what we're trying to solve. So we can just write down and agree, this is what we're trying to solve. Then it becomes much easier. And somebody could say, yeah, my design just doesn't support that. Like, okay, well, then that's why we're not considering it. Um, that, that's really what I was trying to capture is, you know, what, what is we're solving? And it's worked really well for the notary stuff. Like we wrote down, it took us a while to get there, but we wrote down what it is we're trying to solve. And now a lot of these arguments just go back to like, but that's what we said we were trying to do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we definitely put up a list of goals um, for an index API. Is, is this search or is it just the ability to have a locally cached index of what's in the registry with some event notification over time, right? Or you know what, and what kinds of data can we pull out? It seems like we're we want it to be more than the, than you know than just just the manifest and type, right? We want something else, um, descriptors, things like that. I think that's the point. What is the what is the vision that we see over time? And if we know we're paving the road from here to there, then we just we can we know what sections do because we have a blueprint. We've agreed upon a blueprint. Yeah, I one one thing I think is very important is that. Um, I'm not trying to build a new thing so much as just fill in what is possible than it is missing. I, I, I know what I can implement with GCR. I know that I can implement my design. It's very possible that there's a registry out there for whom my design is impossible or overly cumbersome and impossible to implement for them and they will never do it. And that's terrible. So, so for- Okay, for so nothing in your, in your descriptors was additional content that was required at the tooling side. Right. You're, you're, it, it's, it's all there already, already? Yeah, I, you have to have all this to serve uh, a, an image, right? Or, and so I'm I- just making sure I didn't look in detail yet. That's your- Yeah, yeah. Like, and, and that's- I think I did a couple of years ago when you first promoted, proposed it, <laughs> Come, coming off the, doc, the Docker distribution proposal, but uh, yeah. And it would be helpful to hear people, you know, is this possible or impossible? Would you implement it's this? Not, not a promise, but just like a, a kind of check. I, I interrupted someone, I'm sorry. I don't know who that was. Sorry, it was me. Um, uh, can I ask a question to the group? Uh, is user experience in scope for OCI or is it just following Docker's user experience? From, from the uh, perspective of the clients that are using our specifications, they need to be able to get access to the information, yes. Okay, uh, the thing is that um, it seems to me that the use cases are expanding. And so the user experience for those use cases are still not defined. Um, I'm wondering maybe we ought to start there. Well, I, you, you've provided quite a few of those use cases in the past. Um, that's sort of why I was asking Johnson, you know, what was he looking for on the, on the descriptor? <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know if he was going into your area, Nisha, you know, if with human readable descriptions or was he doing, you know, going off the, you know, an existing, you know, field that's already in the, in the image. I mean, I past. could, I suppose there is uh, because the, the specs are so vague with regards to all these other requirements that we're asking for. Uh, anybody can go off and, you know, build their own special uh, ecosystem and say like, oh, right. we can we can plug it into that uh, um, 
whatever is existing right now, all the Docker images and such. Uh, so for example, with Steve's uh, manifest uh, proposal, that can be hosted somewhere else and it points to some Docker image and says in another registry and you can say, okay, for that Docker image over there, these are all the, uh, you know, yeah. artifacts. Then, then, but, then we run into more off problems. How yep. do we get the? How do we get that content? You know, which yep. server was I pulling it from? It, is, it goes around in circles. Yes. But, uh, uh, yes, it's almost like you want to break out of that loop and go off. And you want to break out of <laughs> it at least when when, it, when if you have to link to a remote server, I think that that becomes too complex. The stuff that John was John was talking about, where it's already in the scripter. Then, and if it, if it's there, then we can probably you know display it or provide it back in the list. I, that that's not quite the same as oh, and use the auth that I gave you already in my first connection and go pull it from the server over there, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, even with I think we're, we're at, when it's an artifact and it's stored in the same registry and it's using your extended config information, which includes author and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera and possible ex external references that we're not going to pull for you but you but for which you can use i think you're yeah. okay right it should hit it should hit your you know your scope and then it would just require the client to go you know pull it on its own yeah, yeah i think it's a matter of, like one of the things we've been trying to do here is one of the separable pieces right like a, a notary signature is only meaningful when it's pointing to a thing that it's signing those, those are like demonstrable pieces a Helm chart that's pointing to images, I might get the images from somewhere else. So and it might be a completely separate registry. So the, it's the way, are they, are they separable in a way that of course the end result is the client has to figure out off, but it's not like I'm pulling layer one and layer two, for, like we'll use, I'll throw windows foreign layers under the bus here. If I'm in a lockdown environment, I can't get to the foreign layers because they're off at another location, right? Those are the kind of things that we wanna avoid taking a, a, a a transactional object, if you will, a bad term, and splitting it across multiple things. It's here's the independent independent pieces. So anyway, we're, we got off in a little bit of the weeds. Um, anyway, so uh, there's a couple of PRs out there to try to capture these. I'm hoping we'll um, just iterate on what it is that we want, and then we can say, yep, that fits in this. That fits in the plan. Everybody agrees that's what we want to do, and then yeah, let's just start adding stuff so that people know we, where it fits and we can easily add these things. We're at time, so we'll queue up for next week. And um, thanks everyone, see you later.